My first couple days with the new Skyline OS update. So what are my findings? Well, so far, everything is working, except maybe some of the Android Auto users. You want to pay attention to the end of this video. We've got a few issues there. I've noticed a few updates. One of the big updates, right, is the CarPlay screen. The background of your CarPlay now bleeds over into your gauge, so it's a nicer look. In the system menu, they've changed just a couple things. Like when you go to system, now there's an actual software version where there wasn't before. And at the bottom, we now have a help and it presents a QR code to uh, infotainment system help screen. So just a couple changes there. Under audio, we now have speaker setup. This is the built-in Rockford Fosgate software that allows you to add speakers, remove speakers, and adjust some things. It's kind of nice that that's built in now and you don't need that Rockford Fosgate app anymore on your phone. You can just do it through the infotainment screen. For us 23 and a half users, this wasn't there and you couldn't use the Rockford Fosgate amp at all. So now at least we have a few settings available to us here. I've looked through all the menus and I really haven't found anything else. It looked to me there were a few additions in the navigation section, but as I try to validate that with an older bike, I'm really not seeing any, any real changes there. But will the navigation work better? I haven't had time to ride. It snowed here. It's nice today, but I haven't been out yet. So I don't know if the navigation works better or not. But I do have a video coming on this one pretty soon. One of the biggest wins for me is with the heated grips. So the heated grip icon always used to be on the screen. And then you would turn your heated grips on, it would light up the, the little flame icon one, and you press it again, you get two, you press it again, you get three. But I always found it was annoying that the heated grip icon was even visible at all with them off. So guess what? Now when you turn your bike on, there is no heated grip icon until you turn them on. I think this is a big improvement. So I've had very little testing with power cycling the bike. Well, actually I've done it several times now. I will say that CarPlay connects consistently now. It's always connecting and uh, that's a big improvement. Um, but I'm finding the Wi-Fi really isn't any more reliable. So using the hotspot on your phone still doesn't always connect. And I think that's still a challenge here. But let's talk about Android Auto. So if you're using one of the Android Auto interfaces, there's some big changes here. There's definitely a difference as to the way the Bluetooth connects. So the headset has been very consistent in connecting. I don't have any issues at all with my uh, Senna 20S connecting. But if you're using that Cameco adapter, it has a built-in headset. And frankly, that no longer works. It'll connect, but then it disconnects, and then it connects, and then it disconnects. It just, just doesn't stay consistent. Having a lot better luck with the Cameco if I use my Santa 20S as the headset versus the built-in headset feature. So I think you'd have to invest in some sort of wireless headset or like the Madehawk adapter that I featured in my headset killer video to get around this. So I guess this is pretty similar to all the rest of the devices, but that was a big bonus of this Cameco device that it had the built-in wireless headset. But frankly, I find it's working better now after the update if I don't use that built-in headset. So let's talk about the CarLink device. I really do like this device. It's small and it's very simple, but it has one big problem after this Skyline OS update. It does not identify the screen size correctly. So one of the features of the Skyline OS update is that the CarPlay background now fills more of the screen. The problem is, according to the car link, it looks like it uses the whole screen. But then your, your gauge cluster is covering up a lot of that interface. So you can't see your Android Auto interface correctly. Most of it is hidden behind your speedometer. I could not get around this. I've tried all the settings in the box. I've tried resetting the box. There's a, a background feature I turned on that doesn't work. I played with the resolution, tried them all. None of them work. I set a custom resolution, no luck at all. The uh, car link is just not identifying what the screen size is after the Skyline OS update. It thinks that the whole screen is for it to use, but that covers up most of what we need to see. 
So unfortunately, I cannot get this to work. I have reached out to Carlink. I sent them some photos. We'll see if we get any response. There may be an update they could do for us. Maybe there's a setting I'm not finding. It'd be great to get it working again because I think that's a really great device. But I would say if you're within that 30-day Amazon return window, you may consider it because I'm not sure this will be fixed or not for the Carlink device. So if you're an Android Auto user, I'm not sure what your experience is going to be based on what device you have. It's really unfortunate. I'm not sure if we'll see updates to these devices that will fix it or what. Clearly, Harley-Davidson's Skyline OS update helps CarPlay. I think it connects more reliably, it looks better on the screen, but man, it's not working for these AI boxes. So some early feedback from you out there. I've received a lot of comments that people are having trouble with the USB 2 update, getting various errors and it failing. I really encourage that if you're running into issues with the USB 2 updates, that maybe you use the USB drive that you did for USB 1. So make sure it's formatted EXF FAT and then copy over the folders and the one file to that thumb drive that worked and then try your update again. It's very clear in the documentation that the USB 2 may not have any updates that your bike needs, but I think you should still get that message that there are no further updates available. And many of you are getting errors. We also note that the amplifier, if it has a software update failed, the amp failed to update. So you may try just a USB thumb drive with that 1.3.8 amp update and nothing else and boot that up and see what happens. I will say this is all a little bit risky. We don't want to end up with an infotainment system that doesn't boot at all. And I am not a Harley-Davidson employee or an engineer for them. So I really don't know how to advise you here, but those are some of my thoughts. I know many of you have been able to update this successfully without any issues, and you are all reporting the same as I am. Everything seems to be working well, which is great. It was what we were hoping for. But if you're running into errors, try reformatting that drive, make sure it's EXF FAT format, re-extract the files, make sure you have the three folders and the one file and nothing else. If it's just the amplifier that's updating, maybe try just the SREC file and, and see if that works for you. But I hope you can get it to update. If you cannot, I highly encourage you to call the customer care line. They can reach out to the infotainment system team and I bet you'll get a little support there that's helpful. You can take it to your dealer, but your dealer's not gonna know yet. Nobody knows anything about this Skyline OS, OS update, and I'd be afraid that your dealer would end up keeping your bike for several days while they wait on Harley. So you might have better luck just reaching out to Harley on your own. So let me know what you're finding. Did you find a change that's a cool feature that I've missed? Post it in the comments, I'd love to see what you're finding. If you're struggling with it, feel free to reach out to me. My email is here on the screen. You're welcome to reach out. Send me some screenshots of the errors that you're getting. I'm happy to try to help, but I suggest you're gonna to need to call the Harley-Davidson customer care and see what they have to say. So I hope you've been successful with the update and I hope you found this information useful. If you did, share it with someone else. But until next time, in the Friction Zone,